Welcome back. Here's another nonfiction notice and note reading strategy. Let's get started. So why does the state put up signposts along the road? To make sure you don't get lost, right? So that people can go ahead and keep going in the right direction. Authors provide these signposts as well. They do this to help you find your way as you read, right? They want you to get the message that they're sending. Quickly, what's the difference between fiction and nonfiction? Remember that nonfiction is more than just not fake. It's designed to go ahead and make us think about the world around us. It is always written from someone's point of view and is about something real happening in the world around us, okay? Do more than just read and accept nonfiction at face value, form an opinion on it, and actually actively think about it. Some examples of nonfiction texts are our textbooks, okay? The articles that some of the, some, uh, informational teachers might go ahead and print for you, autobiographies and biographies, human interest stories, op-eds, and how-to books. Now, why is reading nonfiction difficult? Remember, it could reveal bias. The information could be too technical, complex, or specific. The vocabulary could be oh, uh, too overwhelming. Ideas are hard to understand on our own. We might disagree with the text, the author, or what how the information is saying it. Our views may change as a result of this reading and that can make us uncomfortable. But it's important to remember that using our signposts will alleviate or help a lot of these issues. So please keep your eyes open for these signposts and read and pay attention. Why do we annotate with these signposts? Well, signposts were designed to help us figure out how to think about a text. If you take the time to notice them, they will dis you'll discover all sorts of things about the text that you may not have noticed before. You're going to realize the main idea, main points, evidence, all kinds of things. So our on your journey through a text, take the time to notice and note what the author wrote for you to find. A text, especially nonfiction, is more than just what the author has written on the page. On to our next signpost, numbers and stats. Our objective today is that you will be able to identify the numbers and stats signpost in text so that you can make conclusions, comparisons, and inferences. You'll also be able to find details, facts, and evidence. So what are we looking for? When you're reading and you notice specific numbers, number words, or amounts, these are all the examples of numbers and stats. Are there any keywords that could maybe help us? Thing, words like many, often, occasionally, few, looking at certain dates, specific numerical, uh, numerical amounts such as 1, 14, 271, right? Uh, the words majority, half, several, ratio, any of these uh, words may have let you know that you found a numbers and stats. Example number one. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address honored the 50,000 plus soldiers who were killed or wounded during one battle, the Battle of Gettysburg. It was only about 300 words long. Even though it was very short, it reminded us of all that was lost in that battle and must never be lost in our nation. So, as we look at this example, we can see things like 50,000, one particular battle, which references the important piece of information that is the, Betty, the Battle of Gettysburg, the idea that this was 300 words long. Uh, these are all numbers that give meaning to what we are reading at this po point. Example number two. One recent college graduate, age 22, wants to be one of the first people in a manned trip to Mars. Because this, uh, because this is planned to be a one-way trip, he doesn't want to date anyone so that he doesn't worry about leaving someone who loves him here when he takes off. So looking at this, we see an actual number, age 22, how old this person is. The idea that they want to be one of the first people in a manned trip to Mars, right? So this all gives us the idea, hey, this could be important. Uh, because of this point, uh, it is planned to be a one-way trip, right? Highlighting this lets us know he may not be coming back and explains why he doesn't want to date anyone. So what kind of reading skills do we get by actively reading and finding numbers and stats? Well, it helps us draw conclusions, find facts, generalize, show details. It also helps us make inferences or comparisons, find evidence, and understand the author's purpose for the text or their bias. 
Remember, evidence, finding facts, and details, these are all examples of important information that can be used to support claims, opinions, and argumentative writing. We use this information to prove a point, okay, in our writing. Inferences and drawing conclusions. An inference is the process of drawing a conclusion based on the available evidence plus previous knowledge and experience, right? An educated guess. This means that the information is nearly, uh, never clearly stated. They give you hints or clues that help you, and you are the one that need to read between the lines. Using these clues can give you a deeper understanding of your reading, and seeing these clues lets us know that you are actively reading. Comparisons. We've seen this before. This is another way of highlighting the similarities between things. It can also help us show the differences, right? Examples of this is just contrasting, comparing and contrasting, as well as identifying similarities, uh, usually through the use of a Venn diagram. When we find this signpost, we ask ourselves, why did the author use these numbers? You ready to give it a shot? These are roughly 28,835 jelly beans. I counted out 500 of them and used those to weigh the rest. In this pile, there's one jelly bean for each day that the average American will live. You might have more beans in your life, or maybe less, but on average, this is the time we have. Here's a single bean. It's your very first day. A special day, but kind of a rough day on everyone involved. Add 364 more and you have the first year of your life. Now, for a sense of scale, here are your first 15 years. 5,475 days, which brings us to the threshold of adulthood. And at that moment, this is the time that we have left. And this is, on average, what we will do with all that time. We will be asleep for a total of 8,477 days. If we're lucky, some of that time we'll be sleeping next to someone we love. We will be in the process of eating, drinking, or preparing food for 1,635 days. We'll be at work, hopefully doing something satisfying, for the equivalent of 3,202 of those days. 1,099 days will be spent commuting or traveling from one place to another. Maybe a little bit more if you live in L.A. On average, we will watch television in one form or another for a total of 2,676 days. Household activities, like chores and tending to our pets and shopping, will take another 1,576 days. And we will care for the needs and well-being of others, our friends and family, for 564 days. We'll spend 671 days bathing, grooming, and doing all other bathroom-related activities. And another 720 days will go to community activities, like religious and civic duties, charities, and taking classes. After we remove all those beans, this is what remains. This is the time that we have left. Time for laughing, swimming, making art, going on hikes, text messages, reading, checking Facebook, playing softball, maybe even teaching yourself how to play the guitar. So what are you going to do with this time? How much of it do you think you've already used up? If you only had half of it, what would you do differently? What about half of that? How much time have you already spent worrying? instead of doing something that you love. What if you just had one more day? What are you gonna do today? So, now I want you to go ahead and think about this. Why did the creator of this video use these particular numbers? Remember, by finding these signposts, we go ahead and show that we are good readers, okay? When you notice these signposts, we stop and make a note of it. Any questions? Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.